Welcome to the ACE Emerging Professionals webcast, a series of short sessions featuring conversation with a wide range of inspirational speakers on the most challenging topics in our industry. In today's episode, How to Become a Leader in the Age of Digital, we will be discussing the topic of hy hybrid career paths, the process of innovation accelerator, and how digital transformation will impact the way we work in the future. I'm Wojciech Szefczak, Chair for the ACE Emerging Professionals in London and Southeast Region Committee, and I'll be the host for this episode. Today, I'm with Emily Skuns, Senior Computational Design Engineer at Rumble, and winner of the European Women in Construction and Engineering Awards 2020 in the Best Women in Digital Innovation category. Emily, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So we both work at Rumble and sit on the ACE Emerging Professionals Committee, so we know each other well. But can you share with, with the audience, uh, what do you do and what is your career journey so far? Yeah, so I'm currently the business development lead of a tool that we call SiteSolve, which is a team within Ramble. And SiteSolve itself is a generative design platform uh, that we use to help with the optioneering and designing of residential massing at very early stage. I do a little bit of everything. So I've done everything from being part of developing the code base through to speaking to clients, through to developing the business models and the sort of commercial aspects behind it. So I wear a lot of hats. But if I'm honest, I actually originally started out wanting to be a structural engineer and actually stumbled across sort of computational design, digital design by accident as part of a summer placement at Ramble a little while ago. And following from that, I decided to go out to Stuttgart, Germany, to go and study on a new master's out there, which focused on sort of computational design, working with a whole range of different people from different backgrounds, from architects to biologists, computer scientists, but all with the sort of aim to try and come up with new ideas and concepts for architecture and construction. And so after that course, I came back to to Ramble and I started off by doing a mix of sort of traditional structural engineering projects alongside sort of creating digital tools and platforms, which helped to both sort of automate some of the processes that we were doing through to kind of creating these platforms where we could explore different design solutions. And this kind of evolved into what I'm now doing in the team, uh, the SiteSolve team. And while I've been part of the SiteSolve team, I was also part of an innovation accelerator, which helped us to take some of the ideas of SiteSolve from an idea concept through to a whole new business offering that Ramble now gives out to, to clients. So that's where I am now. That's a very interesting career path and very unconventional, I would say. I can personally relate to that because I, I started my career as a civil engineer after a couple of years, I moved into the project manager roles, and now I work as a management consultant advising clients on major infrastructure projects. I hope you agree with me that you are an example of a person who, um, who decided to take a hybrid career path, which required from you to develop multiple skills to become where you are now. So a business development manager at SiteSolve where you combine the structural analysis um, abilities and expertise with computational design knowledge and uh, entrepreneurial skills. I would like to understand a bit more about what inspired you to take a different career path than other peers. Yeah, I think the main reason I went down this route was because I enjoyed it. You know, I loved the engineering side, but the more I got to know about sort of computational design, the more I realised I also enjoyed that. And at the time, I wasn't really happy to choose one path or the other. 
and you know I could see all the benefits of using computational design and I used to describe coming into work as you know coming in and actually just kind of playing because I was you know using all these cool technologies and the likes to kind of come up with solutions and I was getting so much support both from colleagues from Ramble and it just meant that I could really just sort of take on these challenges to learn these new skills even though it meant that I was you know maybe maybe having to work harder I don't know but um, you know it ended up in the end being a very easy choice as it's now kind of led to some amazing opportunities that I would don't know if I would have got if I had just you know taken one path or the other. Um, what is your opinion about hybrid career paths? Yeah I think they're they're really good I mean I think you know more traditional career paths are also perfectly valid but if you do enjoy you know, two aspects, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in terms of digitalization. It can be some other kind of area of expertise that you can really achieve a lot and add a lot of value by having that sort of mixed career path. So would you recommend to other emerging professionals to take hybrid career paths? Yeah, I definitely would, especially if it's something that you enjoy. I think it's definitely possible to achieve greatness in both because obviously going into it, it looks a little bit scary because you don't know how it's going to affect your career, all these kinds of things. The the path is not as well trodden as sort of a traditional consultancy role. But with the right attitude and the right mindset, you can use both of those sets of skills, both in parallel, but also in collaboration to really add value and come up with better solutions. So I would highly recommend it. And also the world uh, around us is changing and constantly creating new challenges. Look, now we are living in the age of digital and I think that this is influencing us to develop new set of skills and sometimes or even often to reinvent ourselves. I'm I'm interested to, to hear about the, the process you've gone through where you developed your entrepreneurial skills. Um, can you describe the innovation accelerator process? Yeah, so I think that was a really interesting experience for me. So essentially it was a a series of, of processes where we went through a kind of tech startup boot camp where we learned a lot about setting up businesses, starting up a startup within a corporate. And I think that was really interesting for me because although I had been, you know, parts of creating a lot of digital solutions, I hadn't really considered how to make it into a business and so I definitely learn a lot in that process. So so what exactly um, did you learn uh, from this process? Yeah so one of the big things was I think changing the way that you frame problems. I mean I've always been very interested in finding solutions and coming up with ideas of how I think I should solve a problem but what the Innovation Accelerator really did was made you reframe it so that you put clients front and centre and find out what their pains, what their problems are, so that you can develop something that really meets the needs of what they need and actually create a solution that they will pay for, which is a very key part of, of business. I think I also learned a lot more about business models. I'd, I'd got a kind of sense a little bit from being at Ramble but this really was a kind of way more in-depth learning about how you can pull different levers and the impacts that they'll have on different parts of your your business model and also learn a lot about different kinds of business models for example which um, I'd only been exposed to sort of traditional consultancy ones and so learning a few different other types was really interesting. And the last and maybe the most important part was really how to sort of test and learn really fast. So rather than creating a solution, making it perfect, going to a client and saying, hey, I've got this cool solution. What it was really about was saying, OK, what can I do to test a lot of the hypotheses to really check that this is something that the client wants? And no matter whether it was a fail or a success, to take the learnings from that to apply to the next test in order to kind of keep developing in a way that meant that you were always creating a solution that was was valid to the client, really. So personally, I feel lucky to receive my business education quite early 
uh, in my career where I've learned about service design and innovation. Uh, but I'm proud to see that um, design and engineering companies are, are giving the opportunity to emerging professionals to develop their entrepreneurial skills and changing their mindset, mm -hmm. then their mindset. Um, gaining the, the knowledge of how to create value for the client, understanding their challenges and addressing them, it's very important. But creating a new business around that is, is at another level. Um, I hope you will agree with me that, that after going through this process, you've learned how to look at the problem or, or, or a project from completely different perspective, right? Yes, definitely. I mean, I, I come at it now with a much more different way in terms of how to frame the problem and not necessarily just applying the solution that I think is is right, but really either going and using clients as part of your design process, really involving them from the start to to understand, you know, is this something that you're developing is is what they want? Or one of the things that we definitely learned when we were there was actually don't even go to them with a solution already in mind, go to them to really understand their problems, the pains and gains that I was explaining a second ago and uh, using that to drive your solution rather than your own thoughts on the process. OK, um, let's move to the next question. Um, so most of our audience is working in the design and, and engineering companies and everyone is now talking about the uh, computational design becoming a new way of working. What is your opinion on how digital transformation will impact the way we work in the future? Yeah, I think it's going to have a huge impact in all levels, you know, everything from all these new technologies. But if we focus more on sort of computational design and digital design, I think there's a few areas where it's going to play a huge role. The first one is obviously the automation of sort of repetitive day to day tasks and we hope that that will obviously help with productivity, but I think what's important is that it's not about making things just happen faster. It's about making more time for the creative, allowing for greater coordination, greater collaboration um, in order to sort of design and make things better. The last piece kind of, the second piece kind of builds on that a little bit, which is sort of creating collaborative spacing, spaces and using computational design to really test and design things in a more agile way and use the power of computers to mean that we can test a much larger solution space and i think this is crucial especially if we're going to be trying to hit sustainability goals productivity challenges embedding in health and safety is that computational design digital platforms allow you to kind of embed a lot of those principles into one place so that you can be designing and seeing the impact that that has on all of those aspects rather than being so siloed and it allows for sort of greater collaboration not just between consultants but also with like the local communities for examples or new domain expertise that we don't necessarily have traditionally in our industry right now okay good um and the last question from me uh, what are three things individuals can do to become leaders in the age of digital? Yeah, I think this is a really good question and I'm sure everyone has their own ideas of what they should do. But I think my three would be, first of all, being open minded. And that can be in two ways. One around learning new skills. Um, I've definitely had to learn and adapt my skill set as I've been going through my career in areas that I never envisioned I would um, but actually it's led to a lot of positive things happening the other is in the area of listening to others everything in this space and in this industry is now starting to change faster than ever and so getting that new insight being able to listen to other new domain expertise that are coming in new ideas that are coming through from fresh grads for example through to the experience of uh, you know, people who've been in the business for however many years. Uh, I think that's really important. The next one would be to be brave. And that works in a few ways. It might be by taking a slightly different career path than the traditional route. It obviously has its own challenges, its own hiccups, but actually it can be really beneficial to both yourself in terms of learnings, but also to your clients and your company. 
the other part of the being brave is don't be afraid to fail. And that's something that I've really had to learn throughout my career. I definitely, I mean, I still am a little bit a perfectionist, but previously I was much more of one and I didn't like the concept of taking something that wasn't perfect and showing someone. But actually throughout my career, I've really learned how to test ideas on a much smaller scale so that you are able to take learnings from it in order to develop better. And that was a very scary prospect, but be brave enough to fail. And the last one would be to be wary of your own experiences. And this builds a little bit upon um, my first point about sort of listening to others, because everyone comes to a problem with their own ideas, their own biases, your own experiences built in. And that's something that can, as well as sometimes getting you quite far, can also be a hindrance. And one of the ways that I've that really kind of summarizes this for me is that there was a quote by Henry Ford who said, if I'd asked people what they wanted, they would have asked for a faster horse. And this was obviously before the car was invented, invented. But it's this concept that you don't necessarily know what your solution is or what you want as the answer. And you have to kind of think slightly outside of the box to come up with the solution that you uh, think you want. Thank you for, for this um, for this answer. And just to summarize what we discussed in this episode, um, hybrid career paths are becoming more and more popular. And Emily is is uh, is a great example of that. Um, developing an entrepreneurial uh, skill set is it's is very beneficial to become a well-rounded professional. And we as emerging professionals have to adapt quickly to the to the changing environment. Be brave and always stay, stay open minded to become leaders in the age of digital. Is there anything else um, you would like to add, Emily? Uh, no, just thank you for having me on and having a nice little conversation. Thank you for your time and, and sharing uh, your insights with us. I really appreciate it. Uh, many thanks for listening. I hope you found our conversation insightful and interesting. We want to hear from other emerging professionals. And the question for this episode is, what do you need from your managers to help you become more innovative? Please let us know uh, what are your thoughts in the, in the comment box below. We will reply to your comments in the following days. You've been listening to the ACE Emerging Professionals webcast. Uh, to find out more about the webcast, upcoming episodes and events, visit us on our website or on our LinkedIn page. Thank you.